Hi everyone, Lydia here, and today we're gonna to talk about kind of a variety of knife sizes and what they do. Um, not all knives are created equal, um, so there's kind of a lot of options when it comes to it. So I'm gonna run through what some of these do and what I use them for, and then, um, you know, I'm sorry, they're not the cleanest. We've had a very, very busy summer, and we have had an insane amount of work. So these knives get used and they get used very heavily. So a lot of these are kind of dirty or rusty, but they, they get used a lot. So first things first, kind of run into some of the smaller specialty knives. So we always have these on hand. We don't necessarily always use them, but we do always have them around. Uh, this would be like a pie knife, kind of looks like a piece of pie or, you know, a piece of pizza or whatever you want to say. But this is good for getting into like weird off angles, kind of spots like that. So if you have like an off angle ceiling coming into a straight wall part, that can help you get into those spots. Same thing with this guy. I guess this one kind of looks more like a piece of pie than that one does, but it depends on how you eat your pie. But this one is also kind of a pie knife here. Uh, again, super sharp angles, anything real tight that you gotta get into, this is a great option. It's really sharp, so be careful when you use it. Um, you know, these are some of the smaller knives. These ones you can use for screws, like you can single spot, you can use them with putty, uh, you can use them for touch up, just kind of small stuff, picking angles. I typically am using a six, eight, 10, 12. Those are my four knives I always use, but I do always have these little guys, you know, on hand just in case I need them for a small spot. Some people love using smaller knives, really just depends, but something to keep in mind when you are using a smaller knife, like you're not gonna wanna go and coat a flat with this knife, it's tiny, it's not gonna do anything. You can wipe tape with it if you so choose, I mean, sure, but you're gonna be wiping your, you know, your knife on your pan every two seconds, but you can use these for wiping tape, they got a nice flex to them, um, but typically I would just use these maybe for screws and some small touch-up areas that need to get done. Um, and then we can move on to some of the bigger ones. These are the fives. I used a five for a really, really long time. I now use a six. Again, it's all personal preference. You can do screws with this, wipe tape, pick angles, kind of just a little bit of everything. You can feather with these a little bit. They're pretty flexible, but you're not going to get a large feathered out area. So if you're doing a flat or a butt, you're not going to want to be coating with this guy. Now we'll kind of get into some of the bigger knives. This is my eight I use for taping. As you can tell, it is a disaster because I only use it only for taping. And something that as you're in the industry longer and longer, you do start to find, I like this knife for this task. So for me, I love wiping tape with an eight. This guy is really, really curved. It's very soft and it has a lot of flex on it. So when I'm going, I'm wiping tape. You can tell I put my finger right there. I'm wiping my tape like this and I'm moving across the wall and then it's catching the extra mud, and then it's also doing a nice bed on my tape. So as you can see here, the tape's nice, and it's in the flat, it's in the bevel, and then it looks perfect, and then we can come back and coat that. You can also coat with an 8, 10, 12. Typically, that's what I'm doing, or you can do 10, 12, 14, or you can do um, 10, 12, 12, whatever you wanna do. But when we're looking at these bigger knives, these are the ones that we're gonna be using when we're starting to feather things. So if I go up here and I do my first coat with an eight, so say I've got my first coat with an eight, my edges are feathered, my mud's pretty much concentrated in there, then I'm gonna come back after that's dry and then I'm gonna go a bigger knife size. And the reason I'm doing that is we have an eight and then we have a 10. So we're able to feather that joint out a little bit more, get rid of the lines and anything that's left from there, and then we just have a really nice look going on. And drywall is all about feathering things out. So you don't wanna be able to look at this wall and be able to see where that flat is. If you can see where that flat is and your eye picks it up, that means we failed as our finishing. So we start small and we go further and further and further out. So these are the ones you wanna be feathering with. Real flexible, so you're able to cut an edge, you're able to kind of coat that flat. I do really like blue steel for my larger knives. It does rust, um, it's not a big deal. I usually just sand it out. If you're storing these for a long time, like I'm grabbing these knives every other day so they're just getting used really heavily. But if you are storing them or you have them in a bag or you don't want them getting rusty, you can spray them with some WD-40, um, wash them, dry them, and then oil them up and then we'll get rusty on you. But you know, I'm pulling these out every other day so you know they, they get used. But this one is a 12, so again, we just be going further out. So 
So as you can see here, we go bigger, bigger, bigger. So then you have all these subsequent coats. So the, the 10 will cover the eight and then the 12 will cover the 10. And we're getting thinner and thinner and thinner with our mud as we go. So this is typically what we'd be running. I uh, prefer blue steel for my bigger knives. I just like the flex with them, they're nice. Something that most people don't know too is when you do get these knives, there's that metal part down here on the bottom. You can actually bend and flex this a little bit depending on what you want your knife to be doing. So say you are, you know, coating a flat and you want to add a little bit extra mud. You can go ahead and just kind of bend this a little bit and then it'll make it a curve on one side. So then you can have, see, it just curved this knife a little bit and then you can go the other way and have a curve going the other way depending on how you're wanting to use your knife. Or if you just want it super, super straight, which is most of the time what we're looking for, you know, you can bend it back and then get it back to straight. So um, knives are pretty cool. I definitely am a knife user. I'm not a hawk and trial user. You can use knives with pans or with hawks. Really just depends on what you like and what your preference is. They also do come in like a big back style. So this is the knife that we use when we do a skip trial. This is the only thing this knife is used for. Um, and it's just kind of like it does a really nice skip. So as you can tell, there's just more blade there. So you can kind of get a little bit different angle with the knife. So um, you can also feather with those. I mean, technically any of your big feathering work you're gonna be doing with these larger knives right here. These little guys are really kind of just for screws, small things. The big guys are what you're gonna be going for for your corner bead, your flats, your butts, um, any sort of feathering out to your joints, you're gonna to wanna to go with these bigger knives. Small guys are great for putty, touch-up, screws, angles. Like I'm not gonna go take this knife into an angle. That would be stupid. I don't need to do that. So that's when this little guy comes into play. Um, you know, keeps it nice, keeps it tidy, and keeps it small. So that is pretty much it. Feather with big, um, you know, small stuff with the small guys. And don't be afraid to go with the big knife. I see a lot of people that think that, you know, everything should be done with something small because then you won't see it. But again, the whole art of drywall is feathering and disappearing things. And if you keep it real small, real tight, you're gonna see it almost all the time because your eyes are gonna go straight to that spot that looks off. So don't be afraid to get into some of these bigger knives, thin down your mud, cut your edges, and uh, you'll be a lot happier with how your work is turning out. So that is it for me this week. Uh, you can catch me on all the socials under Drywall Shorty, um, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. And I will catch you guys next week for another episode.